What's up guys? Hey, in today's video, we're going to talk about writing water damage mitigation estimates. And in this video, I'm going to show you three different ways to write it. We're going to break down three estimates that we've used at our company, and it's going to be QuickBooks Online, Xactimate, eh, and time and material. So it's all three platforms. Uh, and if you stick around to the end of the video, I will even tell you and show you guys how you can go about getting free copies of this stuff uh, from us as well. Let's go. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and get back. So I'm gonna jump back on in. First off, I wanna say that there's no single right way you can write these. When we first started, we started with Xactimate. So maybe we'll start over there first, okay? So let me go ahead and share my screen. So, Xactimate estimate. So as you get in here, one of the things you're gonna see, there's just a little cover letter. This is from Xactimate. You're just gonna put something describing who your company is, et cetera, okay? We just put thank you for choosing the company for whatever. It's just an opening statement, if you will, right? Nothing to it. Um, and then you get the back down. The way that we wrote our estimates is a little bit different than a lot of other people. So you can see that we've got, we would break it down more like a story. So we've got like an initial visit um, and we would charge something for some of this here. Um, we would have an equipment section. And so we would just put like, you know some of the work that we did there and the and so this is like the equipment that we use the initial visit the equipment and it kind of read a little better i think for a lot of our clients um there's different ways to write these this is just the way that we did it and i call this a story-based estimate i felt like this was better for us and our clients and a lot of other people um that went through different schools wrote them a little bit differently adjusters won't write them like this um so we did it a little bit different we chose for we wrote uh for bundles rather than individual pieces uh, for 200 something bucks. But you can see that, again, it was just written down initial visit. There was the equipment we use, the work that we needed to do up front, if anything, uh, source of loss, any work that we needed to do in that area. And then uh, if there was any special conditions, this is like where we had to do like some decontamination stuff or maybe a special clean, uh, or maybe if we had to do a dumpster. But the special condition section is just an area that I would put up there where we're just describing, hey, this job's a little different than others. A dumpster is a good one, right? You don't normally need a dumpster on a job. This one was a Cat 3 job, so there was some special outstanding conditions, and this one was a $10,000 estimate, okay? So this is the way that we did our uh, Xactimate stuff. Xactimate's got predetermined pricing in there. Um, you can set and change your own pricing, but the carrier's gonna argue with you either way. So for that reason, I'm, I just don't like Xactimate. If you don't know and you're not using one, then I would just tell you don't use Xactimate, use QuickBooks. So that's where we're gonna dive into now. So here is one for a QuickBooks estimate. We saved ours as a template, so we would launch templates. So we've got a template $7,000 water loss. So the, over the years, we changed a little bit of what we did and how we did it because we got tired of hearing the arguments from the adjusters. So if you notice, this one looks a lot different. We've got an initial response section for 285, equipment setup and delivery, 589. We stabilized a couple, uh, a couple of days here, or at least one day. And then we have a little section explaining what we're going to do. We put that in a summary section. Okay, so you want to you want to make sure that you explain to it in a timeline, at least for me. Um, and then we come back to start the service call. And then this is our prep work again. You notice that kind of stays the same. We had to bring the equipment back, uh, so that is there. Um, then we've got the negative air fan. There's our PPE bundle, negative air machine, fan dehu. I don't know. If, yeah, I didn't I didn't do the equipment setup. The same way here i think we we had changed what we did here but this is just an example you can pause it to go back and look and see um and then we still do the work performance side of the loss right and the reason i do it this way i kind of feel the devil's in the details if you write it line item by line item it winds up being 13 pages and it takes you too long to arrive at the dollar amount that you want to arrive at and so for us uh, we wanted to be around seven thousand dollars so that's how we wrote it and that's how we got there so it's a nice clean simple what two-page estimate that i just think it's easy to read it makes sense and bro this thing got piffed we got paid in full okay so that is the example of our quickbooks online estimate and again if you guys want this um then you can go to workwithshane.com and we can talk about getting these to you again we will verify that you're not an adjuster first so this is what our time and material estimate is okay and our time and material stuff we put a cover letter on it when it's a little bit bigger. So we just kind of say, hey, this document outlines the scope of work, blah, 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 blah. This document is designed to uh, represent the pricing of our work and the scope for John Doe. And then this is just the description and the findings of what we see. We would only do these for larger jobs, larger losses. What was this one? I think 18 grand. So if it's over 18 grand, I'll probably do uh, these on a time and material sheet just because I feel like it tells the story a little bit better. Okay. 
And so, but again, we just tell them basically as a story, what we found when we got there, the material that, that was affected, how many square feet, etc. And so it just puts that stuff in there. And then here we put a summary of the charges. We break down hours on the large mitigations differently than a lot of people. So I just feel like it, it allows you to arrive at the $18,000 mark more cleanly. It's also what I call a muddy scope. And so a muddy scope is something that we coined it, we started using it. It's accurate, but it's not necessarily what the adjuster wants to see. They're used to seeing squares and rectangles. This is handed to them differently. So their objections and their arguments don't really stand because they don't have them. They literally read from a flow chart and this isn't on their flow chart. So that's why we use it, okay? Um, so we tell them the mitigation by the area, um, nine grand for the bed, for the bathroom, uh, so you could just see, there's no way to break this down because you don't know much about this job, but you can see it's a summary. And then we had some contents that we did. So we, we uh, explain all of that as well. And then here's how we break down those things. So in the master bedroom wing, we've got the equipment. So this is everything that we did to arrive at the 9,000 right there. Okay. Does that make sense? And so that's putting that there. And this, the job, this job was paid in full, by the way, guys, it was paid in full. It was piffed. Um, so maybe that tells you a little bit and if you guys want this spreadsheet we actually give this to you both the front end and the back end calculation sheet um, when you take our test drive okay so you can go to workwithshane.com and find out about that it is a paid deal and it's not for adjusters so you have to have a company uh, we'll, we'll sell it to you but then before you get any of this material we have to get on a call with you and verify you are who you say you are and uh, we've had to kick a few people out and it's not that anything is nefarious or illegal going on it's just like I don't, there's no reason for an adjuster to take a class for contractors. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so anyway, special conditions, dumpster, equipment, cleaning, like it's pretty, pretty straightforward, but like I just wanted to take a minute and go through to show you what these look like, okay? So these are our three type of estimates, right? So we've got time and materials. That's the one you saw there. QuickBooks Online and Xactimate. You can pause this video or go back and watch it again, uh, or you can go to workwithshane.com and I'll give you examples of this stuff. There's a lot more that you need to know about writing estimates and about how to submit it and to avoid some of the traditional arguments. Guys, I'm gonna tell you this, insurance work is a bit of a game and you need to know how to play. There's really two outcomes, literally what I've found over the years. They either pay them in full or they cut them in half. They either pay them in full or they cut them in half. And like, that's really the, the biggest theme that I think I've seen. Um, if you guys stick around, you've been in the business for a while. And if, if that's your experience, drop a comment down below. I would love to know. If you want more information on some of these, drop a comment. I read all these comments as well. But you can use any platform you want. For me, I think it's more important to use the time and material when you're over eighteen thousand dollars 15 18 grand so it reads properly um but anything under 13 grand or whatever like i would just put that on a quickbooks estimate make sure you're accurate and um we we actually give our clients like templates and we, we teach you how to use templates to do your jobs right so like i said you need to be fair you need to be consistent and if you're not consistent in your work that's a bigger problem too okay your invoicing and your billing needs to be the same over and over again and it wasn't that way for us for years and we fixed that okay so anyway um hopefully that's helpful for you guys um if you haven't there's a video about exactimate and uh who they're owned by uh, which is very risk if you haven't seen that video go into my video section and check that out you're going to want to see that one and that's going to probably give you a better reason to get off of exactimate because you were just funding the devil's operations bro okay if you guys enjoy this share this video on social media and tag me in it, it would mean the world we'll see you guys in the next video Hey guys, if you enjoyed that video, I've got three things for you. Number one, if you haven't yet, click on my face below and be sure to subscribe to the channel. Okay, we put out new content each and every week. Also, if you want me to help you grow your company, go to workwithshane.com. Workwithshane.com, put in your information, we can get on a call and see how we can help you grow your company. Lastly, there'll be some other videos right here. If you want to watch more content about growing your restoration company, check out one of these videos. We'll see you guys on the next one.